Stuffed sirloin tip roast. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. That's a tough piece of meat, and it's going to take hours to cook. The kitchen's going to get real hot. It's going to burn up energy, money. It's not worth it. Well, it is worth it because I've got a great way of doing it. We're going to take it and cook it in a pressure cooker, which is going to cook it with superheated steam. It's going to cook it in 45 minutes, make a gravy. Uh, all you've got to do is add mashed potatoes and a vegetable, and you're ready for dinner. 45 minutes. Okay, we're going to start with some vegetables here. I'm going to make a stuffing to stuff the roast with. We're going to make some pockets in the roast and fill it up. Then we're going to put it in the, in the cooker and let it cook. Uh, and it's going to make its own little gravy. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But we're going to start the vegetables here. Go with a little bit of oil here. Now I've got a preheated skillet here. Always get my skillet hot so, to, so it, the vegetables don't sit there in, in, in the oil. It's going to start sizzling as soon as I put it in. Red peppers, yellow uh, sweet peppers, green. I'm going to start and stir that up a little bit. And I'm going to let this cook for a little bit just to get get the heat on it, get the coal off of it. I'll come in with the onions. That's set. Toss it a little bit, get it started. Now I'm going to try to get a little bit of color on it here before I put the, the seasoning in it. I want the, the vegetables to start to sweat. I want the juices to come out and, and, uh, and kind of evaporate on the, on the bottom of the skillet. Let the, the vegetable flavor start to intensify. Then we'll put the seasoning in it and cook that down. I'm going to add some other ingredients in a minute too, but we want to uh, kind of caramelize it. We want to get to that point where it, the sugars are starting to come out of it. It's starting to brown and get all the flavor we can out of it. I think we can go ahead and put the seasoning in now. We've got a little barbecue magic here. Shake it in there. We want to make sure we've got enough. I know you can never have enough. Load it up, toss that around. Okay, while this is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and make the pockets in the, the roast so we can, uh, so we can pick. Once it's cooked, I'm going to let it sit for a couple of minutes there, and then we'll start putting it in. But I'm going to start making the holes in it. And by pockets, what I mean is we're going to start making some holes. I'm going to put the knife not all the way through, go about three-fourths, kind of turn it, and use my finger to kind of make sure the hole is, is big enough for the vegetables. I want to make them about three-fourths of an inch apart. I say the more the merrier. The wonderful, wonderful flavors that you're going to get out of this as it cooks is going to bleed into the beef and give it a wonderful seasoning flavor. The juices from the beef are going to also mix with it, and it's just going to make a great, great flavor. Plenty of holes. And like I said, about three-quarters of an inch from each other. Go ahead and make my holes here, my little pockets. What's wonderful is when you, once this is cooked and you start cutting into it and, and you get lucky enough to grab one of those holes of one of those pockets of seasonings, uh, you know, when I was growing up, that was everybody's flavor. Actually, it's still my favorite is to grab a hole of one of those pockets of seasonings. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I can get a little more seasoning on here. Looks like the pockets of holes in this seasoning can are not big enough. All right, get that tossed in. Now I'm going to finish this off in a minute here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of uh, put uh, some fennel, fresh fennel leaves here, and we've got some sliced fresh ginger, which is uh, also very wonderful with this dish. I'm going to stir this in for a little bit, let this cook together, let those flavors start to marry together. I'm going to finish it off with a little uh, stock, really kind of make a paste out of the seasonings, which uh, will uh, be a lot easier to get into those pockets on the roast. All right. I'm going to give this a little taste to make sure we have enough seasoning in it. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of brown sugar. Kind of stir it, break that up a little bit, let stir that into it. And a little beef stock. Do a little deglaze in there, get all the nice little brown particles off the, off the bottom. Stir it around. 
Now, we want the stock to evaporate because we want to conden condense those flavors there, really concentrate them. Once that's done, I'm going to put it on the pan, let it cool a little bit. It doesn't really have to be cold because it's going to, we're going straight into the pressure cooker and we're going to cook it uh, from there so it doesn't have to chill. It's going to be great in it. All right, turn the fire off. Go ahead and spread it out a little bit here, just enough to where it cools enough to handle. All right, so we're going to start on this end. Put the vegetables in. Just going to push them in with your finger a little bit, like that. Once I get the holes filled, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of it on top. I'm going to lay it, layer it around. Once I put it in the pressure cooker, I'm also going to put some around the sides. We want the flavor to get in every place we can. Uh, and, and as it sits in the pressure cooker, as it cooks, the vegetables are going to keep cooking and they're going to bleed in, into the beef and really spread the flavor all the way through the beef. So a little bit more in there. Don't want to skip any holes. Now get them all in there. Now, you know, some of the ginger is a little big to go in there, and that's okay. We'll set it on top. We'll get the flavor from it anyway as it, as it cooks. The browning of, of, the, of the roast is wonderful. Did that quite ahead uh, just to make this go a little bit quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of use this one and spoon it a little bit more here. Just spread it out. And then we'll get that pressure cooker ready. And we're about done, 45 minutes. Now we're going to put stock in, in the pressure cooker instead of water, which is, which is going to really in, enhance the flavor. You got to make sure you take off the regulator. Okay. Now we've got a, a, a cooking rack in it. For me, it, it really makes a big difference because it, it keeps a, the roast off at the bottom, keeps it from sticking. It also lets the steam cook it from underneath as well as on top. Because as the steam rolls, it, it cooks it around the side and, and the top as well. But you need that steam underneath us to, to reach it also. So we're going to go. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put the beef stock in. Got one cup here. I'm going to set the roast in. Wow. Perfect. I'm going to set that in a second. Go ahead and set the lid. Close it. Put the regulator on. It's going to cook at 15 pounds of pressure for 45 minutes. Let it start steaming up, and then we'll turn the fire down a little bit and count off 45 minutes. All right, this is about done now. The steam is, has finished doing its thing. You know, it, it's, it's going to make an awesome gravy, and the reason it is is because we use stock and not water. Now, you have to have liquid in a pressure cooker for it to, for, to make it work, for it to work. So, you know, if you use stock or if you use wine or any of your favorite liquids, uh, fruit juices, beer, if you're doing, you know, uh, those kind of dishes or whatever your favorites are, whatever kind of wines you like, it is awesome. It will just enhance the flavors. It reduces it down. It, it injects it into the product that you have in there, whether it's a meat or beef or chicken or whatever it is. But it just, uh, it goes all through the meat. It does make a great gravy afterwards. And uh, just remember that. The stocks are so important. And, uh, it, you know, the restaurant wouldn't be what it is without it. So it's that important. Okay, we're going to open it up now. I'm going to take the regulator off. We know uh, before I took the regulator off that the button, the lock button was down, which means it's safe to open it. I'm going to raise the lid. Oh. And there it is. Stuffed sirloin tip roast.